be. But yet we come up with every excuse yes. we can to push God to the bottom of our to-do list. Yes. And I'm going to encourage somebody in here today, stop making excuses for why you can't come to church. Stop making excuses for why you can't serve. Oh yes, you say you had no time, well you ought to make time. Why? Because Jesus made time for you. Some folks make the excuse that they can't get there, but I dare you to just pick up the phone and call the church and somebody will pick you up. Some folks make uh, the excuse that they have small children. Have you ever heard of bringing your children with you? Sin. 
God does not tally up our sin. He tallies up our victories over the sin. And so when we stand before God, uh, He already knows that we've sinned and fallen short. What He's going to be looking for is how many of the temptations did we overcome? Oh yes, the story is told of a soldier who was wounded at the Battle of Shiloh during the American Civil War. And he was ordered to go to the rear. And so when he went to the rear, the fighting was so fierce that within minutes he returned to his commanding officer at the front and said, Captain, you got to give me a gun. This fight ain't got no rear. In other words, listen, if you've been a Christian for a hot minute and you've been paying attention, you'll know that you cannot run from temptation. Why? Because temptation doesn't have a rear. Temptation is all around us. It's in the front and it's on the side and it's definitely behind us. In other words, sin is all around us. And I've got some good news this morning that as Christians, we don't have to worry about temptation because we got some ammunition. Oh yes. How many of you know that you have to fight fire with fire? Oh yes. Too many times we try to fight fire with water but sometimes you got to add some fire to the fire. Y'all know I'll be where you want me to be in a minute. Uh, when these Sunday Christians were asked how they resisted temptation, uh, they gave various answers, but for the most part they gave the same three answers. The first answer they gave was pray. That's exercising your relationship with God. God knows this world is filled with temptation because he's the one who kicked Lucifer out of heaven. You need to read your Bible, Isaiah 14 and 12. But God also gave us some ammunition against the devil. He gave us prayer. And through prayer, we're able to connect with God's Holy Spirit. That's the lifeline that strengthens us when Satan tries to make us weak. Jesus said, all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive it. That's Matthew 21 and 22. But the problem is not the abundance of temptation, but the problem is the lack of prayer. Temptation is going to come, but we need to be praying. We need to be praying before, during, and after. Oh yes, the second, the second answer or advice that this study gave us is to avoid compromising situations. We got to listen. Some things we got to just avoid. You know, you we, you don't have no business going there near it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It says avoid compromising situations. That's exercising our duty to God. Listen, God expects those who have confessed sin to His Son. And those who have confessed Christ as their personal Savior to walk circumspectly in the world. In other words, we don't jump into all the world and what the world has to offer. We have to stay on the perimeter in the safety zone where it's easier to escape temptation. Oh yes, we are cautious and watchful and vigilant. The Apostle Paul says that there had no temptation taken you but such as in common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make for you a way of escape, that ye may be able to bear. That's 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. And if you want to avoid 